Hello, welcome to Group Therapy Central, where today we're going to be talking about the difference between support groups and therapy groups. Now, if you already know the difference between support and therapy groups, you are definitely in the minority because most people don't know the difference. In fact, many mental health practitioners don't know the difference between a support group and a therapy group. And if they do, they might not really be able to articulate it very well. So it's important to figure that out so that you know which one you might want to join if you're searching for a group to join. And if you're a practitioner, it's very important for you to know the difference so that you can make appropriate referrals for your clients. So there are a number of differences between support groups and therapy groups. Of course, there's some overlap as well, but it's important to recognize the differences. One of the biggest differences is in the goals of each group. A support group, the goal is usually focused around supporting each other. And a good word for that, I like what Raina Pollock uses in her blog post, I'll have a link to that below, where she notes that the primary goal of support groups is to help people cope, help the group members cope. And usually it's around a common struggle. For example, if you are joining a group for people recently divorced or recently diagnosed with cancer or family members of uh, people with autism spectrum concerns or whatever it might be. And so you get together and you help each other cope with that struggle. And oftentimes these are struggles that you can't change. And so you're working to help each other know how to respond differently and how to live with that and have support people that really get it. Because sometimes family and friends might not really be able to get it. If you were just diagnosed with cancer, uh, they can be as supportive as they can, but it can be super nice to go and meet with other people that are in the same boat as you and receive that type of support, that type of coping. So coping is the primary goal with most support groups, whereas with therapy groups, the primary goal is change. So I go to a therapy group because there's something about me, something about the way I do relationships, uh, maybe a mental health concern that I have that I want to change. The depression that I've had, I want to change that. The anxiety or the eating concern or whatever it might be, or, or especially those interpersonal dynamics and relationship struggles. I, I, I don't really know how to have a strong emotional connection with someone. So I go to therapy to be able to change that, but I want to work on those things. Now, of course, in a support group, people change a lot. Support groups can be very therapeutic in that type of way. And then, of course, vice versa, therapy groups are extremely supportive. Um, and if you're coping with whatever it might be, you're definitely going to receive a lot of empathy and understanding and support and people cheering you on in that type of way. So they're not mutually exclusive in that, but there are two very different goals. One is to help you cope. One is to help you change. Some of the other important things to note. Um, Therapy groups usually are closed, meaning that it's the same group of people that meet each week with the same one or two group leaders. And the membership doesn't change. It's, um, if, a, if a group member graduates from group or maybe moves to a different city or, or stops being in the group, then there is a spot that opens up. But it's not just that anybody can join that. There's a significant onboarding process that happens with each group member where they meet one-on-one -on -one with the group leader or group leaders to be talking about their goals for a group and figuring out if it's a good fit and if they would be a good fit for a particular group. Um, and then in that case, then maybe someone would join the group. But other than that, it's closed and so it's not open to new members. Support groups can be like that, um, but oftentimes they're more open, meaning you can join a support group at any point. Uh, some support groups are drop-in based. So you can show up one day without any pre-group arrangement with the group leader, if there is a group leader. Um, and, and so you might go once and then not go again for another month, and that would be totally fine. And so support groups usually are more open in that type of way and may even be uh, that drop-in type of uh, membership. So, and along those lines too, is um, therapy groups, there's always at least one group leader that's trained as a group uh, interventionist that has some good training in how to do therapy with a group. And so the interventions that are coming from the group leader are very directive in helping each member work on their goals and help the group as a whole be able to make changes and develop and grow and, and work through uh, the issues that each member is facing. Uh, with support groups, they can be led by a leader, sometimes a leader that has training to be a therapy leader, but they're running a support group. I've not done a number of, of, of course, therapy groups, but also support groups. But my role is different in a support group where we're not doing the therapy-based interventions, 
the interventions are more surrounding how can we help each other open up and talk more and support each other and simply be uh, a comfort and understand each other, uh, but we don't go as deep as we would in a, a therapy group or do the type of group interventions. Um, and then many support groups, of course, don't have leaders in that type of way. It's a group of like-minded or, or people struggling with the same type of thing that get together and their peer run in that type of way. Another difference uh, could be the size. So therapy groups, minimum would probably be five members plus the one or two group leaders, um, but usually six to eight is what you would see in a therapy group. At most, probably 10. And that's because each person, uh, the, the bigger the group gets, the harder it is to have some of those group level interventions. And the smaller the group is, the harder it is to have some of those group level interventions. So usually six to eight members is what you see. Support group can vary more than that. Um, even two people could be a support group, um, but up to maybe 15 or 20. And if it's a drop-in group, then the, the attendance is fluctuating. So there might be three people one day and 13 people the next day. And sometimes with support groups, there are um, like 40 people or so, but on an any, any given day, maybe 15 people are, are showing up for that meeting. Another quite big difference is how the two different types of groups handle what we call extra therapy relationships, meaning how and when you interact outside of group. So with the therapy group, that's very discouraged. We don't want you to be calling each other or having any interactions outside of group, not even going and getting coffee or, or anything like that. Um, and there are a number of reasons for that, uh, which we'll talk on, touch on in a second. With the support group, it's oftentimes different. Oftentimes those extra therapy relationships are encouraged. We really want you to be reaching out to each other by phone in between sessions and getting together and developing strong relationships and supporting each other outside of the the support group hours that we meet together. Um, with a, a therapy group, you don't want to do that because then that starts to form subgroups and it can negatively impact the therapeutic value for everyone. We want everyone to be on the same playing field and to all be part of the same relationship together. So if two people are getting together to have coffee, they become a subgroup and that potentially could make it less therapeutic for the other members. And it, it actually uh, could potentially be harmful to the group as a whole and to other members. So if somebody does break the rules, let's say two people go and, and meet up afterwards, what we ask is that they be willing to bring back into the group the next session everything that they talked about. Not that they necessarily would share everything, but they'd be willing to, so that we're all on the same playing field. We can talk about that more. There's a number of other reasons for why we limit those extra therapy relationships, but that just gives you a taste as to why we, we limit those. Um, the role of the group leader is a little bit different. Um, the group leader uh, in a therapy group is trying to do therapy, <laughs> meaning making therapy interventions, whereas the role of the group leader, if there's a group leader in a support group, is to try to be helpful in, in helping the other members support each other. A commitment, of course, there's a big difference with the therapy group. You are committed usually a minimum of three months, but mostly six is what you would hear, or probably one to three years is what you would do when you join a therapy group, unless it's in a setting like a college counseling center where you're only there for a semester or two, um, or a hospital setting or whatever it might be. Support groups are uh, usually much more fluid, and so you can uh, join a support group for a month or two or three and then drop out and then rejoin it. Uh, so that type of commitment usually isn't as high. So hopefully this has given you some understanding of the differences to help you figure out which might be a better fit for you and the type of concern that you have. Um, and of course, if you're a clinician to help you better refer your uh, clients. If this struck a chord with you, please um, let me know. Let me know what was res resonating for you. Also, I'm really, really interested. If I missed something, please let me know what I missed, some of the, the other differences. Also, please let me know if I said something incorrectly and help correct that by putting that in the comment section below. And if you have any questions, any things that you would like me to answer, please, please put those in the comment section below. I make it a point to read each comment and, and try my best to respond. Um, so if you have questions about group therapy in general, please let me know and I'll, I'll answer those. Some of the upcoming videos that we have is trying to help you understand if you are a good fit for therapy. 
for group therapy. And so we'll be looking at some of the characteristics of what makes somebody a good fit for group therapy. Um, and we'll also be talking about how you can find some good group therapy. I also recently did a video on how to find low cost or free therapy, not just group therapy, but any form of therapy. I think that's a really good video, so you can check that out. And just remember that any time you ask me a question I, um, or we engage in email or whatever it might be, I'm not your therapist as much as I would love to be and maybe as much as you would want me to be, um, but I would more than love to be your friend and your advocate and help you connect to the resources that you need, help answer the questions that you might have. And, um, and if you are interested in connecting with me, uh, a different way to do that is you can head on over to grouptherapycentral.com where we have a growing list of resources and practitioners um, and also offering some online groups. And we'd be happy to answer any questions you have in that way or help get you connected to some group therapy services or some online growth groups. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.